Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, stepping back into the cage on March 11th, Knockout Promotions of 54. Cody Stamen is going to take on Bill Camry. Cody, I appreciate the time. I was thinking about you when I was watching the UFC event this past weekend. There were two guys making their UFC debuts, uh, Zahabi and also uh, Gavin Tucker. When you deep, when you go deeper into the resume, the, the quality of opponents are not necessarily there. Right. Is it? Do you look at that and kind of go, is that the way to get into the UFC? Is just you know pile up victories? Well, you know, I uh, I watched the I watched the fights too, and uh, I was really really impressed with uh, with Tucker. Um, I thought his stand up was awesome. You know, going in there against a guy like Sam Cecilia and uh, really like piece him apart. Uh, I mean, he pretty much did whatever he wanted on his feet. It was actually really impressive. So. I think that, you know, a lot of guys, you know, maybe maybe just in his area, it's hard to find really good fights. And he had just an uh, opportunity, uh, you know, more opportunities locally. And I, I didn't actually look up his uh, his background, but I remember him saying something about how, like, uh, his overall opponents had losing records, um, like like 37 and 47. Or like, no, I think that was pretty close to what the numbers were. But, uh, you know, I don't think that's that accurate of a judge as to how good a fighter is. I think in MMA you're really starting to see guys that have, you know, more fights and maybe they have more tune up fights and it's it's kinda of tapering more towards boxing and we're not even close to that yet, but at the same time, you know, it's you're seeing guys with bigger records and maybe like less quality opponents. I mean, I have some guys on my my uh my resume that aren't exactly uh, you know, uh world champion world champion level guys. So uh, you know, does like last thing you never know what happens. It could be a last minute replacement. I had a couple yeah. of those where you know, the guy you're supposed to fight gets hurt and you end up with a guy that, you know, has a losing record and kind of just goes in there because he needs money kind of thing. So I, I don't know. It's, it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say, you know, in that situation. I really think it comes down to like, uh, you know, the caliber of athlete, you know, the, the UFC, they look at guys and they, they can usually tell, you know, how good you are, you know, based on how well you perform. You know, I mean, Gavin Tucker, I mean, God, I mean, I sign me up to watch that guy fight. And I think that was going into it. It was a little tough kind of figuring out what type of fighter he was based on the competition for you when you're scouting an opponent and maybe, you know, there are a fight you have coming up. Maybe it's Bill or, or someone else. Do you try to not necessarily look at those fights where you think that they were just the much better fighter in that fight and that maybe you can't gain too much from from looking at that footage? Yeah, you know, I, when I look at a guy, I want to see I want to see who he's beat, who the tough guys are that he's beat. I don't care if he beat uh, a bunch of powder puff guys. Uh, I want to see who he's beat, who he's fought for, um, and I want, I just really want to know what his style is. Uh, I don't focus much on my opponents anymore. I'm more or less focused on myself. But there's little things I want to know if he's a grappler, if he's a stand up guy. Um, you know what his strengths, weaknesses are. You know stuff like that, just to kind of taper a training camp towards towards your opponent but really when it comes down to it you, I mean you just gotta you never know what's gonna happen there I've you know I've I've tailored uh fight camps directly to, for my opponent and then you know a week before the fight it's like oh well you're fighting someone else it's like oh okay so I mean really you just gotta go in that you just gotta get in really good, good shape sharpen up all your tools and uh because you never know what's gonna happen in there you know the cage there's no there's no there's no guarantees there's no certainties you just gotta go in there uh you know with the right mindset and be the best athlete you can be when did your mentality change about just focusing on yourself as opposed to focusing on your opponent? Um, you know, I think it's after I uh, after I, uh, I knocked out a guy named uh, Ruben Bariak. He was 5-0. and all. He was, like, the number one guy in Michigan. You know, everybody kind of thought that, that, that he was unbeatable, and he was this really, really good wrestler. He was really big at, at 145, and I'm pretty small at 145. It's just the opportunity was there, so I was fighting at 45. And... Uh, I tailored my whole training camp towards grappling, and all I did was grapple and defend the takedown, do this and do this. And then I got in there with him, and I realized that, like, you know, I, I could, I could grapple with him. And I, I maybe I focused, you know, after the fight, you know, in hindsight, I looked at it and I was like, man, maybe I, maybe I gave this guy too much respect. I was thinking about him too much and not focusing on myself. I mean, I did go out there and I, I did get the knockout, but I think if I had focused on myself, it would have been a lot earlier in the fight. Um, you know, you just can't you can't give your opponent too much respect. You gotta you get you gotta really focus on yourself and you know just try to be the best athlete you can be. You know, because ultimately, you know, this game is uh, you against you. You know, that's that's the fight game. It's it's really you against yourself. It's just about being better than you were last time. I mean, obviously, it's an individual sport, but how much of this is uh, about the team? 
Um, I mean, you really you can't do this without without your team. I have an awesome team at Michigan Top Team. You know, everybody supports each other. You need good training partners. You need guys that are going to be there for you, you know, on a daily basis to make sure that, you know, you're doing the right things that are, you know, critiquing you and helping you, you know, grow as a, as a, you know, as a, as an athlete. And, and I'm pretty fortunate that I have a really, really good core group of guys that, you know, always show up for sparring, always show up for grappling. You know, I have a lot of really good coaches and people surrounding me. And I think that is, it's just, it's a vital key to your success. I mean, look at Conor McGregor. He's still he's still training with the guys that that you know got him where he is today. And uh, you know, I think that's something to you know kind of look at and respect. You know, it, uh, it you, you don't you don't need you don't need uh, to to come out of American Top Team or you know one of these you know mega gyms to be great. I mean, you're seeing guys pop up from everywhere that are really really good. It's just because they have a core group of guys and they really want to be better. That's really where it comes. That's really what it comes down to. Is like you have to want it. You have to want to be the best, and you need to. You need to. Uh, you need to work hard every day. In terms of you know evolving as uh, as a, a martial artist, how have you evolved from your win in November to now? Um, you know, I my win in November uh, against Steven Cervantes. Cervantes is a really really tough kid. Um, you know, I didn't feel like I was the best fighter I could have been coming into that fight. And since then, I have literally dropped everything else in my life and literally just put all my eggs in the basket of fighting. And all I've been doing is training and fighting, training and fighting, training and fighting. And uh, I've really, I think, I think I've kind of reached, uh, um, you know, new heights as an athlete and, you know, mentally and physically. Because uh, I really buckled down after that fight. You know, I was kind of disappointed in my performance. I did come out and win all three rounds, but I felt like I should have gotten a finish. Um, there was opportunities there that I didn't capitalize on. So, honestly, the, it was a disappointing thing for me. But, you know, when when you have these uh, these these disappointments as an athlete, I think that's where you really grow. Um, and I really buckled down. I mean, I, I have a new strength conditioning regimen. Um, I switched on my training around. It's more balanced. Uh, it's a lot more organized. And... Uh, you know, I think it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna echo in this next fight. You know, I think I'm gonna be the the best fighter I've ever been, March seventeenth. You mentioned about the opportunities in the fight that you just didn't capitalize on. Was it something that maybe you just didn't see it in that moment? Uh, it was more like I I was seeing it, but I wasn't pulling the trigger. Um, and it just comes down to you know I wasn't getting the 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 repetitions that I needed, you know, in training, I wasn't as sharp as I should have been, you know, going into that fight. And, uh, honestly, uh, I was expecting, uh, one kind of fight and I didn't get that. I, uh, it, ended up, it turned into a more of a grappling match and I really thought it was going to be a stand up fight. And he, uh, kind of switched it up on me and it, he, he was trying to grind out a win, you know, putting me on the cage and, uh, it, it, it wasn't at all the fight I expected. Um, and I think I got a little bit fatigued coming into that third round. And uh, that's something I never, ever want to do again. You know, it's like if you don't have the gas tank, it's really hard to to do the things you want to do. And, uh, you know, I, I promise I'll never uh, I'll never be tired to fight again. I'm training like an animal for this one. You mentioned about, the, you know, everything's about fighting these days for you. Any concern at all about overtraining? Um. No, because I take I take the you know like I said it's re- it's very organized. I take the necessary time uh, to rest and rest injuries. You know that I'll get during a fight camp. Um, you know I think I had 20 amateur fights. You know this is uh, this is my 14th professional fight, and I think I'm kind of kind of honing in on you know what I need to do as an athlete individually. You know to to be at the highest level and to peak at the right time. It's kind of all coming together, like you know, trial and error for so long, and I've literally you know, I took a lot of time in between fights to kind of think of like what's worked, what hasn't worked for me as an athlete, and I've 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 honed in on on uh, you know basically I train I train really really hard, you know, two three times a day, five days a week, and I take weekends off, and that's really uh, it's really done really good things for my body. You know, I have time to recover in those forty eight hours during the weekend. And then, you know, all week, it's, it's, a, it's a hard grind. On a Friday, you know, I, I'm like, you know, I'm dead. I don't, I don't even want to look at the gym anymore. And then the next week, you know, come Monday morning, I'm hungry to, hungry to get back in there again. And it's, 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 it's been really uh, beneficial for me. Your opponent here at Knockout Promotions 54, uh, Bill Camry, started 10 into his career, 
But three and four in his last seventy, he's been a, a champion in another promotion. Is when you, you prepare for this fight, I know you say everything's about you, what you want to do. But obviously, you're gonna you're gonna look at tape and, and see what your opponent does well. Mm-hmm. Do you see? Did you go back to his first twelve fights and, and maybe see if there is a, a drastic change of maybe why he hasn't had as much success, uh, you know, now as he did back then? Uh, he's one of those old school tough guys. Um, you know, really, really strong foundation. Uh, good boxer, good grappler. Um, I think that the sport more or less kind of evolved, uh, you know, while he was fighting. And the reason I think he hasn't been successful in his or as successful in his last fights because he has been successful. But I think the reason he hasn't been as successful is because you know he didn't evolve with the sport um, to where you know I'm a I'm a mixed martial artist. I can fight anywhere. And uh, you know I think as soon as they as soon as they gave me this matchup, I looked up one of his fights and I just said, okay, let's go. And there was there was really no question like in my mind like I, I can get ready and I could beat like I'm gonna beat this guy and I'm not only gonna beat him but I'm gonna finish him. When you get offered a fight, is it one of those things before you say yes? You, you gotta you gotta go on YouTube and, and find their fight videos and and kind of make your decision based on that. Well, for me now, uh, you know, if it was just me, uh, I would I would just say yes and be like, yeah, yep, okay, let's go. When when is the fight? Or what weight? Okay, let's do it. Um, but you know, I have coaches and people I have to turn to and, and talk to about, you know, management. I got to talk to the guys at Iridium Sports and uh, see what they think about matchups and uh, talk to my coaches and see what they think. And then we kind of, we kind of go, we kind of go from there. I mean, at 12 and one, I'm not really saying no to anyone, but at the same time, I still have to answer to those guys. You know, I, I'm ready to fight anybody. I really, really, really want to fight the best guys in the world. You know, I'm at that point where it's like, okay, I want to fight, you know, I want to fight the toughest of the tough. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to fight anyone, but you know, I really do want to fight. You know, guys in the top ten in the world. Those are the guys I want to fight, and that's you know, that's obviously that's the goal. Um, so for me, uh, you know, anybody anywhere, let's let's uh, let's do it. Are you getting to that point in your career on the regional scene where it's almost getting tough to get fights at this point because there may not be guys who want to sign up to fight you that might say, you know what? That's a fight I can have in the UFC. I don't want to have that fight on the regional scene at regional pay. I'd rather fight him in the UFC at UFC pay. Right, and, and, and it is tough. You know, there's a lot of other guys that are like me that have big records that are 11 and one, 12 and one. You know, 15 and two. All these guys, and you know, when you ask these guys to fight, you know, they all have the same mindset as me. They're like, "Dude, I'm so close to the UFC. Do I really want to take this fight?" Um, you know, before I, you know. Potentially, this could be a UFC, uh, you know, a UFC type fight, um, you know, and I, I honestly do. I would like to, you know, I don't you know, when, it, when it comes down to it. It's about it's about uh, it's about who you beat once you get in the UFC, you know, and if I feel like if I go in the UFC and I just I'm coming off a, a win against a guy with the same record as me. I feel like it it uh, it it kind of puts me at a higher level when I go in, you know, I'm going to be good going in against guys that are, you know, tougher. And for me, like, I, I want those fights. Like, I know that I'm ready for those fights, uh, you know, mentally and physically. Like, I'm, I'm ready to fight those guys. I want to fight, you know, this year I want to fight guys in the top ten. I want to fight I want to fight the elite uh, in the sport, you know, because I believe that's the level that I'm at. And, uh, you know, so for me, like, I do want those fights. I want those tough fights. You know, if, I, if I'm not going to be in the USC in the next few months, you know, I want to fight some guy that's supposed to be in the USC in the next few months just to show – you know, myself and everyone else that like, okay, you know, this kid's a real deal. Like we have to sign him kind of, kind of situation. Obviously the main goal is to, is to get the win here, but how much of the goal of this fight is just be dominant? Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's the, it's always, it's, you know, obviously always the goal, but, uh, I definitely want to, uh, make a statement in this fight. I want to make a statement. I want to show, you know, Sean Shelby and the guys at the UFC, like the A, you know, I can go out and win fights, but you know, B, I want to be entertaining. I want to be flashy. Uh, you want to? I want to do a bunch of cool athletic stuff, um, and I want this to be like a highlight real fight. And uh, you know, I've been training for that kind of fight. And uh, I think you know, if everything goes my way, which I'm, I'm very confident it will. This is going to be one of those fights that's going to be on, you know, MMA Insider. You know, like a few of my other fights, it's going to be like a highlight real type fight, and you know, people are going to watch this and be like, "Damn, this kid's good." In terms of being flashy, and Cody, as always, I appreciate time. 
how do you in the fight know when the, the opportunities are there to be flashed? Because obviously you want to put yourself in the best position to succeed, but how do you kind of in your mindset go, okay, this is where I can do something flashy? Um, you know, I, I, don't, I can't explain it. You know, ever since I was a, a young amateur, uh, I've been throwing stuff that maybe even at the time I didn't even know how to do. Uh, I just naturally come up, like I was throwing flying knees and, and jump switch kicks and stuff when I was like 5-0 and as an amateur. Um, and really I'd only watched people do it. I never actually, uh, like trained to do it. And then I started to like, you know, working with, uh, Darren and Dean Crookshank. Everyone knows Darren Crookshank's a pretty flashy guy. So I started to learn, you know, the technique and how to really throw this stuff. And I've gotten pretty efficient at it. Uh, you know, throwing spin back kicks, throwing spin back fists and, and flying knees and, you know, all that, all that flashy stuff that people really, really like to see. You know, I've actually gotten really, really good at it. And I incorporated a lot in my sparring and in my training. So, you know, I think the, the, the flashy kicks and the, in the uh, you know, the Taekwondo style uh, kicks and all that flashy stuff has more or less uh, become a part of my MMA game. You know, as much as I work on my, you know, my wrestling and my boxing, you know, I do train, I do train, uh, you know, spin back kicks and, and all that stuff quite a bit. So, you know, it just, it kind of happens naturally. If you watch any of my fights, I do throw a lot of, uh, I throw a lot of like jumping techniques, a lot of switch kicks, a lot of spin back kicks. Um, and, you know, I've gotten pretty efficient. Like I can land them uh, with, with good accuracy from pretty much anywhere. So they just, they just kind of come. And, of course, your fight coming up here, Knockout Promotions 54. Cody, as always, I appreciate time. Let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Uh, my social media is the same for everything, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's just Cody Stamen, C-O-D-Y-S-T-A-M-A-N-N. Um, yeah, look me up. Uh, you know, I'm going to be the, you know, the, next, uh, the next star at the Bantamweight division. Uh, I have no doubt in that. And uh, I got a tough, tough test in Bill Camry in front of me, and you know, I'm going to put this guy's lights out.